Hey guys, Fred here at yeah, Math and Engineering. Welcome back. We're going to do a quick video for you today. And it's going to be a few parts to this because this is a long question. But, you know, as a civil engineering student, you should know and really understand in depth one-way slabs and two-way slabs for concrete design. So we're going to start with one-way slabs. Uh, they're a lot easier than two-way slabs and a lot less work. You know, these are, these are really straightforward. Um, we're going to focus on a couple concepts of what makes a one-way slab a one-way slab in the first part of the question we're going to find the factored loads and we're going to just estimate the slab thickness based on deflection uh, requirements let's take a look at the question here we have a one-way slab here and um, this is probably how you'll see it in your book and how it's featured it looks like a beam but as you'll see the dead load and the live load are given in kpa so kilonewton per meter squared so think of this as a slab that's going into the page there mm -hmm. and it's going some depth into the page and uh, the dead load that we have here includes the self-weight of the slab. So that's important to note. Um, we're going to use 15M bars for flexure. So uh, 15M is 15 millimeter nominal diameter bars. That's a Canadian standard. We have F prime C is 25 MPA, FY, and we have all these uh, variables mm -hmm. here. Sorry, the constants for our uh, steel properties and our concrete. And we're asked to design a one-way slab adequate to carry the given loads. So uh, just one, uh, one thing to note here is that um, I live in Canada. So we design according to the Canadian code. Um, so a lot of the things in the checks that we're doing here apply to the Canadian code, okay? So um, I know that we have a lot of it, viewers from other countries. So um, this is just, if you're from, not from Canada, you obviously can't use the, the values for like a minimum slab thickness and stuff that we use. So consult your code for those. And um, you should have a, a copy of the code. This is what our code looks like right here. We have the... Uh, the Concrete Design Handbook 4th Edition for the uh, for from Canada. Use your copy, really understand what it is that we're doing in the steps because the steps are basically the same for, for each country. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started by factoring our loads. Okay, and actually before we factor the load, why don't we go ahead and take a look at um, this this uh, little drawing that I've, this little drawing I've done up for you here and what makes a one-way slab. Okay, so one-way slab, okay, essentially means that this distance here, so the short span to the long span of the slab, uh, we kind of have a slab on supports or on beams here, okay, is greater than two to one. So this could be any number. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case because when we design for a one-way slab, we design for one meter strip this way. However, the, the important thing to grasp here is that the long span to the short span needs to be greater than two to one. Okay, so we have 20 over six in this case. Okay, 20 over 6 is greater than 2, which makes this one way, okay? So when we, when we talk about one-way slabs, we mean that almost all of the load is transferred in the short direction, okay? So most of the moment is not transferred in uh, the long direction. Most of the moment is transferred in the short direction. The moment always wants to go to the short direction, okay? And actually, the reason for that is as the, the beam gets longer, okay, if we draw the tributary areas for this slab here, okay, as you can see, as the beam gets longer, this little tributary area that's being carried by this portion here is, is getting smaller. And as you can see, these trapezoids here are getting larger and larger and larger to the point where I think uh, about 15 sixteenths of the, uh, the load or the moment is being transferred in the short direction this way. So this is the way that we design. Now, when we design a one-way slab, because most of the load is going this way, we design for a one meter strip along this direction, okay? So we have a one meter strip there, and we're going to con uh, consider our span is six meters, uh, center to center. We're gonna design a one meter cross section like this, find the reinforcement, and then we're going to place that along the slab this way, okay? So we'll have lots of kind of one meter strips like this that we designed. So I hope that is a good explanation. That's kind of a really important thing to understand actually when we start one-way slabs mm -hmm. because um, you need to understand what one-way means, which way the load is being transferred because if you're given this, it's not so clear. So with that being said, let's start by factoring the loads. So in Canada, we use uh, 1.5 lied plus 1.25 dead, okay? Uh, there's other load combinations, but for this question, this is the, kind of like the typical load factor that we're going to use. So we have our factored load is 1.25 dead that load is 6 kPa, plus 1.5 live, 5 kPa. That's going to give us a factored load of 15 kPa, okay? Which is equal to 15 kilonewton per meter squared. Perfect. So now um, 
as well. So that is a kilonewton per meter squared unit, okay? So that's spread out across the whole slab. But we want to get that in terms of a linear load. We're going to multiply that by one meter because as we said before, we are going to be, uh, we want to get the load in terms of a one meter strip. So let's go ahead and do that now, okay? So our WF now is simply 15 kilonewton per meter squared times one meter strip. That's the depth. That's going to give us 15 kilonewton per meter. Okay. And that is the factored uniform load per meter of slab width. So now we can go ahead and this, this slab, in this case, uh, we just have kind of one panel and it's, it's simply supported. A lot of, um, when you get into the more complicated ones, you'll have multiple spans and you'll have a kind of a, a negative moment region and you know, you're going to have to develop the bending moment diagram. For this question, we're going to consider this simply supported single span just so we can get the concept and we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the maximum moment. So when we're designing for a slab, we want to design for the max moment and provide tensional reinforcement in that area. Okay, so when we have a simply supported beam, okay, it's going to deflect downwards like this when we apply the load, okay? And we're going to want to provide reinforcement in the positive uh, region here for the moment, okay? Uh, ensuring that, you know, we uh, satisfy development length and stuff like that. We'll get into that at a later time. Okay, so um, we're going to want to design for the critical moment here. The critical moment in a simply supported beam happens at the center. And if you just refer to your load tables, okay, we can get the, the moment or the factored moment at the center uh, by applying WL squared over 8. That's a pretty well-known formula, I think, for getting the moment of a simply supported beam. So we're going to plug in our W. Our L is 6 meters. We're going to use the center to center length when we're finding the moment. And if we calculate that, we're going to get 67.5 kilonewton meter per meter okay, slab width. Okay, You don't need to write that, but that's just to understand that we're doing it per meter slab width. Okay, That's not the uh, moment for the whole slab or anything like that. This is just the moment per meter. And, and now we can go ahead and we can estimate the slab thickness, okay? So the estimation for the slab thickness, we estimate the slab thickness, we're gonna do it according to the code. And the code specifies um, some values that, you know, if you have a one-way slab or two-way slab with beams or whatever, um, it's gonna give you some guidelines, some values uh, that you can use in order to estimate what your slab thickness could be. Of course, we're gonna have to check for shear and that kind of stuff afterwards. But for the slab thickness, um, the good thing about using the code specified slab thickness is that it allows us to bypass detailed deflection calculations. So if we select our slab thickness based on the code, uh, we can go ahead and assume that it will also be um, adequate for deflection. So um, in this case, and this is the Canadian code, yours will be different, but if we have a simply supported slab with depth of LN over 20 or larger, we should be satisfying the deflection requirements. So if we have LN over 20, okay, our, our, the height of our slab is greater than or equal to ln over 20, we're okay for deflection requirements. And our ln, okay, ln means the clear span between the faces of the supports here, okay? And this measurement is to the center of the supports, so we just need to subtract half a column on this side and half a column on that side. So we have 6,000 millimeters. We're just going to subtract by half of one column, okay? And we're just going to multiply that by two because we have half a column on each side. And our clear span is going to be 5,600 millimeters. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and estimate our slab thickness, our minimum slab thickness required in order to satisfy deflection uh, criteria, we're going to get a value of 280 millimeters. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and just round that up to 300. In a test situation, it's always best to kind of round up your, uh, your heights and your thicknesses and stuff like that from the minimum. Uh, because there's no kind of economical requirements um, for your test in real life. Obviously, you want to make the most economical design, but uh, for a test situation, make the, the slab or the wall thicker and uh, and then just go with that. So that's, that's the best thing to do. Now, uh, last thing we're going to do in this video uh, is we're going to estimate the effective slab depth. Okay, so effective slab depth. Okay. So our effective slab depth is simply D. Okay, um, if you've taken the concrete course, I think we have some videos on this as well. But the effective depth, okay, is simply from the top of the beam, okay, to the center of the reinforcement, okay? That is called D. So the entire slab height is H. And actually, just to illustrate here, this, this could be our one meter strip. It's just so you can kind of get an idea. And uh, I'll show that drawing to you from before where this is our one meter strip. We're looking at it from this direction. 
So now that we have, uh, we kind of established what our effective depth is, we can go ahead and calculate it. And this is an estimate, okay? So I'm just going to write estimate here, and I'll explain why in a second. But uh, our effective depth is simply our entire height. So we have 300, okay? Minus the clear cover here. This is the clear cover. We're going to assume a clear cover of 25 millimeters. And we're going to go ahead and subtract the half of the distance of one bar because D is to the center of the steel. So uh, one bar is 15 millimeters, so we have 15 over 2, okay? For calculation's sake, we'll make D270. So the last thing that we want to discuss is why are these estimates here? So this is an estimate, and this is an estimate. Now, the reason why they're estimates, okay, is we don't know whether or not this thickness um, or, or the effective depth, which is uh, based on the thickness, is acceptable for shear or to carry these two, these loads that are applied. These don't consider the loads, they just consider deflection requirements. So what we're going to need to do after we preliminarily check uh, or estimate our slab height is that we're going to need to go ahead and we're going to apply these loads to our slab and we're going to check and just make sure that you know the, the, the shear capacity is okay and you know we're okay for flexure and we can add enough bars in order to be safe for this slab design. So um, that's why they're estimates. We may need to change them if we find that our tests fail. Thanks for watching, guys. This is the first video of a few that we're going to solve this entire question. We're going to go over all the different checks. And as always, if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We really do appreciate it. And stay tuned for that next video. It's in the comments down below. Take care.